vamos, vamos a por el último invitado. Uh, no voy a explicar mucho de su historia porque tenemos un breve vídeo y él va a explicarlo mejor que yo, por supuesto, pero sí que voy a contar la anécdota de mi relación personal con Félix. Yo fui a una sesión como esta hace 10 años y me encontré a un niño de 12 años. Y ese era Félix, hablando delante de un grupo de gente de unas mil personas. Estábamos en Gerona y habló durante media hora, el que es alemán en inglés, con 12 años, y nos dejó impactados. Yo recuerdo que me impactó el mensaje, pero también me impactó la personalidad, la energía, la fuerza. Desde ese día pues, nos conocemos con Félix, con él, con la familia. Somos ahí amigos, compartimos causa. Y la verdad es que creo que es un gran honor que Félix haya aceptado. La semana pasada los medios en Alemania hablaban de que Félix fue el predecesor de, del movimiento de Greta. Buena parte del colectivo de jóvenes en Alemania que está apoyando fuertemente el, el movimiento de Friday for Future Gracias. viene de la actividad que empezó Félix hace, cuando tenía nueve años, hace doce. Y aquí estamos. Félix a sus doce años escribió este libro. Se han publicado más de 100.000 ejemplares de este libro. Este último año ha publicado este, todavía solo está en alemán. La anécdota es que lo acabo de escribir dos horas antes del final de año pasado que pasamos juntos. Y acabo de acabar mi nuevo libro. Y bueno, Félix está... Ahora creo que también es importante saberlo. Él ha estudiado en Londres, ha estudiado temas internacionales y acabada la carrera ahora está haciendo el doctorado en una de las mejores universidades del mundo, en la Escuela Técnica de Zúrich, en una cátedra que está apoyada también por nuestra Fundación Flor de Planet. No lo he dicho, pero tengo el honor de, de haber promovido en España y de ser el presidente y sobre todo el gran honor de ser amigo de Félix. Y solo para acabar, que él seguro que no lo va a decir, Félix tiene muchos reconocimientos, igual sale en el vídeo cuando él estuvo con 12 años en la Asamblea, en la asamblea de la ONU invitado, pero además ha recibido reconocimientos como el la más alta reconocimiento de la República Federal Alemana, ha sido la persona alemana más joven que lo ha recibido y hace dos años fue también reconocido como europeo del año. Coincidencia que otro gran emprendedor de esta ciudad es el europeo de este año, que es Oscar Camps, nuestro amigo. Bueno, Félix es un personaje internacional y con una trayectoria que veréis cuando, después de su exposición que merece tener tenerse en cuenta y seguirle porque va a dar mucho que hablar. Félix, welcome. The floor is yours. Primero, el vídeo, por favor. Sí, sí, me he colocado el vídeo. Sorry, Félix. I was in fourth grade, nine year old, and sí. in our class we had the unit about the climate crisis. And in this um, unit, I developed the idea that we could plant one million trees each country of the world. There's always a child giving a presentation about climate justice. Climate justice means that every citizen in the world is allowed to pollute the air with a certain amount of CO2. At the academies, we children show other children that even a single tree can bind 10 kilos of CO2 per year and how they can plant themselves to send a signal against the climate crisis. They also learn how to give presentations in front of other children to spread the idea of Plan for the Planet. Everybody that is going to start one million trees in their country, come up on the stage. On this world, we can 
make a difference, and never forget, one mosquito cannot do anything against a rhino, but a thousand mosquitoes can make a rhino change its direction. I'm sorry that I have to speak to you in English. Uh, my Spanish is uh, just horrible. But uh, let me tell you a bit about uh, Plant for the Planet and why trees are so incredible, incredibly powerful in tackling the climate crisis. Sorry, the Maybe like this it one? doesn't work. Maybe this one? Could oh, thank you. Beautiful. About 12 years ago, I was a fourth grade student. I was nine years old, and my teacher asked me to give a little presentation in my class about the climate crisis. And when I prepared that presentation, I found out about Vangari Matai, a woman that had started a movement that ended up planting 30 million trees across Kenya in 30 years. And in the process, she used tree planting as a tool of women's empowerment. I didn't really understand the depth of the genius of her work, but I did understand that trees help us um, with the climate crisis. And this is why I told my classmates that we should plant one million trees in each country of the world. I think a million was just the biggest number I could come up with, and I don't think I had any clue how many countries existed, but my classmates liked the idea, and the first step was obvious, plant a first tree. And that's exactly what we did a few weeks later. And this is where we were incredibly lucky because two local journalists reported about this first tree, and this is how some other local schools heard about our work, and they planted some trees as well. And this is where we met a slightly older student who created a very simple website for us. And this website was essentially just a ranking among local schools of who had planted the most trees. And lots of schools wanted to outcompete their neighboring schools, and this is how Plants for the Planet spread. After one year, we had planted about 50,000 trees. After three years, one million. And children and youth all across the world started joining us. And our young members started to do more than just plant trees. They started speaking up. They started giving presentations at first in their own class, in their own schools. But they became increasingly more daring, speaking in front of adults as well in front of uh, rotary clubs at first. And then um, they started talking to their politicians, their mayors, their governors, their elected representatives. On three occasions, our members have even spoken in front of the UN General Assembly, and many have talked, um, spoken with their presidents and other national leaders, always trying to convince them to do more to tackle the climate crisis. One wonderful example of this is Yana. Yana is just 12 years old, but a few months ago, she gave a presentation just after, at the conference just after the CEO of Deutsche Bank and her governor. And she was so amazing that the journalists basically only reported about her. And just after that, her governor um, invited her um, to a one-on-one -on -one conversation where she spent over an hour trying to convince him to make his state the first carbon-neutral state in Germany. And to allow all our young members to do that, to raise their voices, to get themselves heard, we're empowering them at Plant for the Planet Academies. These are workshops, physical workshops, at which we always bring together lots of kids from lots of different schools that learn what the climate crisis is, why it's so important to plant trees, and they all make plans of what they are going to do to help tackle this crisis. And we've empowered over 80,000 of our members in 73 countries at such academies. And of course, we've organized lots of them here in Spain as well. And maybe all of this is why, after the death of our um, great inspiration, Vangari Matai, the UN asked us to continue leading her project, the Billion Tree Campaign that she had started in 2007. The campaign had the initial goal of planting one billion trees globally. But because so many governments, organizations, and companies got involved, 
the campaign became incredibly successful and actually so far over 13 billion trees have been planted. And this is why a while ago, after we took over the responsibility for this campaign, we started asking ourselves, what's the next step? What should our next goal be? And in that process, we really had two big questions. The first question was, how many trees even exist in the world? And the second question was, how many additional trees could we plant? And we thought that these were incredibly simple questions. So we asked a couple of uh, climate scientists, a couple of ecologists, but none of them, uh, them had any clear answers for us. But th thank God we then found three excellent scientists at the Yale University in the US, and they did a three-year research project for us. And in that project, they concluded that we have about three trillion trees globally. Three trillion trees, that's about 450 trees per person. And they also found out that we used to have about six trillion trees before humans started cutting down forests. So that means we've already lost about half of all trees around the world. So that's the first important answer. And the second important answer that they found out in their next big paper was that we have enough space to plant up to another one trillion trees globally without competing with agricultural land, settlements, and so on. So essentially, we could increase global forest cover by up to one-third. And if we managed to plant these trees, they would capture about a quarter of all human-made carbon emissions. So they wouldn't solve climate change, but they'd be an incredibly important step, making it possible for us to reduce our global carbon emissions fast enough to ensure no runaway climate change, to ensure that global average temperature doesn't rise by more than two degrees. Because if we look at how slowly we are reducing our carbon emissions around the world, it becomes incredibly clear that without planting these trillion trees, it's almost impossible to keep the two degree temperature limit. And of course, on top of the uh, climate change benefits, these trees have so many other wonderful advantages, like protecting biodiversity, preventing uh, desertification, and the most beautiful part of all of this is that the most important tree planting potential exists in Africa, in Latin America, and in Southeast Asia. So these are exactly the parts of the world that we should be investing in most. And if we plant trees there, we can create an incredible amount of jobs and wealth through the resources that emerge in, um, in, in those areas. And um, what's also incredibly important for us here in Spain is that in Spain, we also have a huge amount of tree planting potential, much more than all other European countries. And Spain is really similar to the global average. We could increase our forest cover in Spain by about a third. So um, we can do a lot uh, of tree planting right at home here. And when this, this study was published, um, it got an insane amount of media reactions. The, the Guardian arguably went a bit too far with their message, but people are suddenly understanding the true power of tree planting all around the world, which we're incredibly excited about. So we need to build on that momentum. And I think this um, animation by NASA is absolutely beautiful and it's showing us the power of trees. What we see here is the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere over the course of one year. So right now we are in June, now in July, and we're suddenly seeing a massive drop in CO2 in the atmosphere in the summer. And now that the, the fall is happening and winter is coming, the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere is increasing again. Does anyone here have an idea why there's suddenly less CO2 in the atmosphere in the summer and then more again in the winter? Any guesses? What's that? Not quite heating, but that's a good guess. Leaves, exactly. In, in spring, um, leaves start to emerge on trees, which means that suddenly trees absorb much more CO2 around the world than in winter. And because of that, we immediately see a massive dip in CO2 in the atmosphere. This is how powerful these forests are. But we also learned in the past 
that it's not just about how many trees we plant, it's also about how well we plant these trees. That became incredibly clear to me in a project in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, where we had a project with the local government and we saw that the average survival rate of trees planted there was just 22%. So we wanted to show that it's possible to plant trees much more effectively and efficiently. And that's why we started a big project there. We took over the responsibility of 22,000 hectares of forest. That's about 50,000 soccer fields. And we now have a team of 108 employees slowly restoring that forest. And we plant on average one tree every 15 seconds. And we've now achieved a survival rate of not 22, but 94%. And all of that at a cost of just one euro per tree that we grow in our nursery, plant, and then also care for. And it is our dream, our wish, that people copy this work. And that as many people as possible copy this work and do the same in their countries all around the world. We just want to show how easy it is to plant trees. Some of you might be asking yourselves how we fund all of this work. One of the most important answers to this is our chocolate. We started a chocolate um, company in Germany about eight years ago. Uh, we sell this uh, chocolate in um, Germany and Austria, and all of the profits from the chocolate go directly into tree planting. And that is how with every five bars of the chocolate we sell, we can plant a tree. And of course, the chocolate is also fair trade and carbon neutral. That goes without saying. And we're currently also out working on a little app for the chocolate, so if you're out in a city near a store that sells the chocolate, you'll hear a beep in your pocket and know where to go shopping. And recently, we actually convinced um, the, um, the astronauts on the International Space Station to send 12 bars of chocolate up there on board the Albert Einstein. So that was two bars of uh, chocolate for each astronaut, and since then, we call our chocolate astronaut food. And another way we spread our message is through the campaign Stop Talking, Start Planting. Because we've talked about these problems for so long, it's time that we do something. We took one such picture, for instance, um, with then Prince, now King uh, Philippe. And the day after we took the picture, it was in all newspapers, and not just in the newspapers, um, but on the cover pages. Here's on the side, but we count that as well. Sorry, the second clicker also seems to have issues. Um, so could you click for me? Great, thank you. So recently we started asking ourselves, oh, okay, oh God. <laughs> recently we started asking ourselves how, how we could scale up this work, how we could make it as easy as possible for everyone around the world to support tree planting. And this is how we came up with the idea for a big tree planting app. We started this about two years ago, and we officially launched our app two weeks ago. It's called the Plant for the Planet app, and I just want to really quickly show you what it can do. So if you download the app, you have your own personal tree counter, which counts all the trees that you've planted. And if you plant trees, you can then easily register that tree, tell us exactly where you planted the tree, what type of tree it is, and so on, and it'll go up onto your tree counter. But what if you can't plant trees yourself? Well, then you can discover fantastic tree planting projects all across the world, and for each project, see what a tree costs there on average, what the survival rate is, where exactly they plant trees, and so on, and donate directly to that tree planting project so they will plant those trees for you. And what's incredibly important here is that we at Plant for the Planet don't take any of the money, but 100% of the donations go directly to that tree planting organization. And to make sure that this is fun as well, we've added some other features like the ability to follow your friends, um, the ability to start tree planting competitions with your friends, and so on. And one last thing that I'm really excited about is we've added something um, that we call the Forbes list for trees. A tr list that doesn't rank people by how much money they have, but by how many trees they've planted. So now with this app, nobody has any excuse that they cannot support tree planting. We've got this huge vision and huge mission to convince the world to plant a trillion trees. 
So please help us by planting as many trees as you can. Thank you.